When we got home that day, my oldest daughter was waiting for us on the driveway. She came home that evening because she was planning on going to an event along with my wife. As soon as me and my son got off the car, she started asking us what happened, my wife had already called her earlier and lied to her that I convinced our son to attack Ahmed at the hotel where they were having a business meeting. I was outraged by her lies, I couldn't believe how she tried to reframe what just happened and putting herself as the victim. Maybe she thought that I have deleted all the evidence of her affair, maybe she thought she could continue to manipulate the situation to her advantage. That made me arrive to the realization that the cuff was off, and I needed to let everyone know what was really going on in our marriage. Otherwise, she would spread lies against me and muddy the waters. I showed my daughter all the evidence I had, and I played the most incriminating aspect of the voice-activated recorder including the part where she was doing it with him in her vehicle. My daughter was not pleased that her mother lied to her, she understood how my wife was trying to manipulate the whole situation to her favor and cast herself as the victim. When my wife called her back, my daughter asks her where she was, and she said she went to the hospital with Ahmed. My daughter confronted her about the lies, she told her that she knows what was going on, and my wife told my daughter that she would explain everything when she gets home. I was afraid that my wife had already reached out to her parents first, it was late at the time, but I wanted to let them know what was going on. I called her dad, and it appeared that I got to him first, I broke the news to him that her daughter was having an affair with my former client, and I described to him about the incident that happened earlier, and that me and my son followed them to the hotel where they were having an affair and confronted them. I tried my best to tiptoe around the issue as much as I could because I didn't want the man to have a heart attack, but it's hard to tiptoe around a six-year on and off affair. It was painful to hear her dad's reaction. Although he was skeptical because he wouldn't believe that his daughter would cheat in such disregard of our marriage, he promised to get to the bottom of it. He also apologized to me about what I was going through if it was true. He also promises that if it was true, he would support me in whatever decision I made, he said he will talk to his daughter to understand her side of the story and thanked me for letting him know. I told him that I would forward the text evidence I collected months ago, to help his discovery. What made my story seem unbelievable to her dad was, not only that she was having an affair with a married man, but she wanted to be the second wife of the married Muslim man. Still high from the adrenaline from the event earlier, I decided to put all my cards on the table, for once I wasn't worried about what people would say or what the community would think about me. The bubble of perfection has pop, and she did it herself. I had a newfound courage with the support of my kids and the only people that matters to me, and I am going to ride that high because I may lose it when I wake up in the morning. I called my parents that evening and told them my wife has been having an affair with a Muslim married man for six years and was contemplating becoming his second wife. Trust me when I tell you that it sounded worse that I am revealing in this story, the reaction I got from my parent was one of shock and dismay. The way they reacted, you would think my wife had joined a terrorist organization, just like my father-in-law they were skeptical till I sent them all the evidence. My wife didn't come home that night, but she called me, and I confronted her about the lies she told my daughter, she blamed me for getting my son involved and telling her dad about her affair. She tried to turn things around on me, blaming me for getting my family members involved saying that her affair was her business not anybody else, and that I was making reconciliation between us impossible. I was surprised that she still thought that reconciliation was possible, while she continuously tells lies and manipulate me and my children at every opportunity she gets. I asked her how reconciliation was possible when I caught her red-handed in a hotel with her affair partner when she promised to break things off with him. She claimed that things went out of hand, and she didn't plan for them to end up at the hotel and it just happened, and she was sorry, but she still said that wasn't a reason to get our children involved. I told her that it was hard for my son not to notice the friction in our marriage, and the constant arguments, and if she didn't want them to get involved, she shouldn't have had the affair in the first place. When I realized that I was becoming too loud on the phone and my children could hear me, I stopped arguing with her and hanged up the phone because we weren't getting anywhere, she was still thinking that I was partly to blame and wouldn't take sole responsibility, I got aggravated and hanged up the phone on her. I couldn't go to sleep that evening, so I went in the living room to watch TV and drink. The following morning, I woke up to a knock on the front door, I didn't know who it was, I got up and looked through the peephole and was surprised to see two police officers at my front door. I opened the door and introduced myself to them, and they told me that my son was under arrest for the assault that happened at the hotel. I told the police officers that it wouldn't be necessary to put him in handcuff and that we would follow them to the station, and they said that it was standard procedure, they said that it was necessary for their protection. The policeman seemed polite and professional. I told my son to go with them and I will be coming to the station with my lawyer.
They asked me what happened, but I wasn't willing to reveal some of the details as not to incriminate me and my son. I called my son, and they placed him in handcuff and into the police cruiser, that moment I felt like I have failed him and regretted getting him involved in this, my daughters experienced my son's arrest as well and it was an overwhelming experience as I knew we were in legal trouble. Before calling my lawyer, I called my wife and she was shocked that my son was under arrest, she became hysterical, saying that she had to take Ahmed to the clinic for some minor bruises and she went to stay with her friend, I asked her whether Ahmed was pressing charges and she said she wasn't sure. She said she was going to get in touch with him to find out. After a few minutes I called her back and she told me that Ahmed was indeed pressing charges on my son and she was trying to convince him to drop the charges, obviously she wasn't successful because she was still upset. She started going on about how she is hiding secrets for him. I asked her what she was talking about, and she kept promising me that he would drop the charges because she got some dirt on him, I told her that if a man you have been sleeping with for six years wouldn't do this favor, that show how much he values her. Curiously, I asked her what dirt she had on him, and she told me that he was funneling money that was meant for the charity organization to private use. More than three years ago when they had a falling out, was because she came to the realization that he had been using funds from the charity organization to fund his private life, and unbeknownst to my wife, she helped him raise some funds and she temporarily separated from him after she found out that he was stealing the funds for personal use. I asked my wife if she had proof of it, and she told me that she had documentations to prove it and she told me where she stored the documents in our closet. She told me that she wanted to expose him to the authorities back then, but she realized that she may incriminate herself, so she chose to separate from him. Back then I didn't question my wife about the fallout, but now that my wife told me this, I knew what Ahmed has done was a serious crime in the United States, and he may be charged with money laundering and conspiracy charges. He defrauded hundreds of thousands of donors, capitalizing on their interest in funding schools and clean water project to raise thousands of dollars. Under the false pretense that all of that money would be spent on the charity projects. I knew my wife would also be charged as an accomplice if this reaches the authorities. I don't know how much exposure I was in because I am married to her. Realizing how much legal trouble we were in, I told my wife to try to convince Ahmed to drop the charges against my son. As soon as I got off the phone, I called my lawyer and told him everything about my son's arrest and Ahmed fundraising scheme, he told me to gather all the evidence that I can find, and that my wife was revealing all this because she feels vulnerable and that I should get all the evidence before she stops talking and take everything underground again. He also told me that I should file for divorce as soon as possible to limit my financial exposure. The first priority is to get my son out of jail, get a divorce from my wife. Then talk to the district attorney because I may be charged with a crime if I knew about it and not expose him, if it was discovered that he was still carrying on his charity scheme and using my wife to swindle money from unsuspecting people through her charity events. The following morning, I drove to the county jail to see my son, my lawyer was already there speaking with the judge. My son appeared before the judge, my wife and daughters joined us that morning along with my lawyer. My lawyer meets with the judge and tells us to accept a guilty plea, and after he pays for Ahmed medical bills and some fines and few weeks of community service counseling, it would be expunged from his record, we accepted the deal. When I came back home with my son and my wife and daughters, I went to look for the evidence but found that my wife has removed them. Luckily, the night before I had already searched and found the documents she neatly collected and made copies of it before placing it back in the closet, just like the lawyer predicted she has had a change of heart. When I sat down with my wife to talk about our marriage and her relationship with Ahmed, she now refuses to go into detail about his fundraising scheme, I had already collected all the evidence I needed without her knowing. She wasn't surprised when I served her the divorce papers, she must have saw that coming because my kids and her parents are all against her. She begged me not to go through with the divorce for now at least to allow the family to heal but I refused. The following week we brought in our lawyers, and we settled on what she would get in the divorce settlement, we had an amicable divorce arrangement where I paid large portions of my saving and investments. She wanted to take the family home, but the kids didn't want her in the house, so she gave that up. I was relieved when the settlement was finalized and she moved out of the house. Few weeks later, I have an appointment with another lawyer that looked into the Ahmed fundraising scheme and he said that my now ex-wife would be implicated if I exposed them to the district attorney, however, we could get her to make a deal with the district attorney in return she would testify against Ahmed, and it is up to me to either wait till after the divorce is finalized or report it to the district attorney as soon as possible. It's been three months since I filed for divorce, and I can say that I am getting stronger physically and mentally. I am closer to my children and my business is doing great.
My ex-wife lives a few blocks away from our family home and she has been trying to reach out to me, but I don't pick up her calls. Her relationship with our children and her parents is non-existent and she still blames me for it. The lawyer said that I can turn the incriminating documents over to the district attorney before the judge signs the final divorce decree, I am going to give him the go-ahead next week without informing my ex-wife. As for Ahmed wife, I finally tracked her down and told her what her husband was up to and to my surprise all she said was, thank you for the information, and shut the door in my face, I guess when you are one of many wives, it wouldn't really matter if your husband was having an affair.